Peacock here, back at you with another review. This time I'm looking at Lords of Hellas. This is from Awakened Realms, a fairly newish publisher that's really starting to make a big splash on the scene with their games. Now this is a dudes on the map area control game. Think in the lines of Kemet, Risk, El Grande, Blood Rage, Rising Sun, those types of games. Now this board state is after a two-player game where I played my wife. When you first set up, you're going to have just two of your hoplites and your chosen hero. There's uh, four different heroes and whatever color you are, you put the appropriate ring around their base and all the heroes have a special ability. Like Achilles starts with an extra speed. the basics of the game here. So to start off with, you've got four regular actions that you can do in any order. Hoplite movement. Depending on whatever your hero's leadership is, now take note, they can level up throughout the game and their leadership will get better as the game goes on. Um, if you leadership is two, for example, I can command two hoplites. They can move one space each. You cannot move one, two spaces. So maybe I move these guys in here and that will start a fight because there's hoplites in the same space. Another thing you can do is move your hero, whatever his speed is. Achilles has a speed of two right now. So this guy, heroes kind of ignore everything else on the map. They can freely move through enemies and stuff like that. One, two. Now your heroes are used for hunting monsters that are on the map and going on quests as well. And then they can also bring other benefits, like using an artifact if they're in the same place as a battle. Where Achilles here will lend his own strength to a hoplite fight, which a hero normally doesn't. If you have any priests in your priest pool, you don't start the game with them in your pool. You have to uh, build a temple to get them there. But if you do, you can pray. You send them to one of the monuments here. And depending on which god it is, and that and what level it's at that stat is going to increase plus an extra bonus depending on how the monument is built and i'll get into that in a second um the other thing is use artifacts now you could have some artifacts here uh you simply tap them sideways to use them you can use one or more during a use artifacts action you just can't do like a hero movement use an artifact a hoplite movement and then use a different artifact you've got to use them all in one shot they do get reset during a special action, which I'll get into now. So those are the four actions you can do on your turn in any order. You can do all those. And then you choose one of your special actions. Your player board will have seven special actions listed. Once you take that action, they get covered up with this X token until a build monument action clears all these off all the boards. So you cannot use the same action multiple times in a row. The different special actions are preparing. You have a list of things you can choose two of in any combination. Heal your hero if he's beat up. You can uh, heal an injury. You can um, draw a combat card. These are very important, and I'll explain them in a minute. Or you can... Um, Recruit a hoplite to a region where your hero is. If you have any in your reserve, say I have these two, um, and I wanted to use this prepare action to recruit two hoplites, I could put them both down where my hero is. The other thing you can do is build temple. If you have a control marker on a temple and this little temple symbol, you will take one from this card over here. That's where they all start the game and you can erect one in the place you control. If you do that, you're gonna get a priest put into your priest pools. If you pull a temple off of a draft number, you're gonna grab one of these per number of players plus one. Whoever built the temple is gonna have their first choice. And these cards are just awesome. There's, they just, you know when you, you've uh, leveled up your force and you feel like you're powerful, or you're special because of the stuff you have? This game does that. 
similar to the tech tree in Kemet or the clan upgrades in Blood Rage or the season cards in Rising Sun. Hunting. If your hero is in the same space as a monster, you can start a hunt. I'll get into how the combat with that works shortly as well. All the combat in this is diceless. Another thing you can do is recruit. Every city you control, now take note, this is the terrain expansion and the, the base game just has cardboard tokens for uh, the cities and the uh, standees. Uh, in fact, I don't think there's tokens for the, the cities at all. I think they're just, you just use whatever's on the board. So recruiting lets you recruit up to two hoplites in each city that's under your control. Of course, you're limited by the amount of hoplites you have. You can never take hoplites off the board and redeploy them somewhere else. Marching is where you can pick one army, so any one region with hoplites, and you can move them all into an adjacent space. Uh, the other special action is usurping. Now this is um, this one doesn't happen often because you need to acquire a glory token from killing a monster. Once you have a token, it's going to be based in one of the colored regions around the map. If your hero's in a spot, you can usurp a place. You automatically force enemy hoplites out. You take control of it automatically without a fight. And then you um, get to add a hoplite to that place. Other than that, the, the uh, action that kind of resets everything is the build monument action. You do a build monument action. Everyone removes any priests that happen to have been praying. They go back into your reserves, not your player board where they can be used. You will add a level onto a monument. So if I was building our Hermes here, I would add that piece of the statue. They all plug in. Everybody clears off their action boards. The person who did the build monument would get a priest for every temple that is under his control. So in this case, I control two temples here, so that means two priests would immediately go back into my pool to be used again. And then that would end the uh, the turn. Oh, an additional, when someone does a build monument, any artifacts that are used are reset so they can be used again. And then you roll a dice to see what each monster on the map does. They're either gonna do nothing, they're going to move, or they're gonna attack a region, usually uh, killing any hoplites that might be in there. Uh, they could possibly even injure a hero. They some of them have some special rules. After the monsters move, then you're gonna draw an event card. It's either gonna be a new monster added to the map. If the monster's already out there, it's gonna slide underneath that monster card and it's basically gonna evolve. It's gonna get another special power or typically just more hit points. Or it's gonna be a quest and if there's room on a quest track, it'll get added there. So that's a game round now to explain combat. Combat between players works like this. If two opposing sides of hoplites find each other in the same space, um, now a hoplite could be fortified. When you're moving a hoplite, you can always choose to move them into a city, which gives them an extra defense or an extra force, so to speak. So say we're looking at this fight here. It's under green control. These blue guys just moved in. It's four against four. Three plus the extra one for being in the city. So it's tied. The players are going to have anywhere between zero and four combat cards in their hand. Starting with the defender, they have a chance to play a card and add to that force. When you're playing uh, player against player, the top half, the red section of a combat card, is ignored. When you're dealing with players, it's just going to be the number and the bottom half of the card. The bottom right is going to have a little skull and crossbow symbol with a red background. That's how many of your own hoplites you have to kill in order to do that, play that card. You can't exceed the number of hoplites you have. And that's really the main way that casualties are, are taken, other than the loser has to remove one hoplite for the loss and retreat. Very unique and interesting way how combat's done. So, um... Blue came in here, I've got four, they've got four. Say I play this, it's a flank attack. If I have more hoplites, I could have added an extra two to my army strength, but I don't. So say I play this, so right now it's six to four. Well, the attacker has to play a card or he's already lost. So he plays a card giving him plus six. If he had a past, or if I had a past, and um, he played a card, 
I no longer have the option of playing a card, because once you pass, you've passed. So he played a card, uh, say I play one more, it gives me plus one, and then he was out of cards. So I just took the win. So the attacker would have to go back from the zone they came from. If I had a loss, I would just have to retreat to any non-enemy zone. So it could be a neutral zone that I could take over, or it could be one of my own. If he did win, my guys would have to... Uh, I would lose a hoplite for losing the fight. Um, I played one card that gives me a casualty, so I have to take my loss. Blue played a card that gives him a casualty. And then my last guy, I would have to retreat with. So I lost one for my card and one for losing the fight. Now this goes under blue control. Fighting against a monster isn't too different. If a hero does a hunt action, first thing they're going to do is draw cards up to that hero's strength. So just say I had four cards and then I had a strength of four, I'd be able to draw another four cards. And that's the only time you're allowed to have more than four. Um, any other time outside of a hunt, as soon as you pick up the fifth or, or beyond, you have to discard down to four. So the first thing you have to do is play a card with a symbol in the top left that matches a symbol of a wound that you would give to a monster. So sometimes you might have, have a card that matches a wound. You might just be hoping for it on your when you get to draw up at the start of a hunt. Um, some cards will be like if you play three with the same symbol, you can do one of any wound. So say that monster didn't have any bows that I could do a wound to. Then I could play, this card says use three with a bow symbol to deal a wound of any type. Then I can choose where I put the wound on the monster. Some of the wound symbols would have a reward like a priest, which would let me take a priest and put it in my priest pool. You're only allowed to take one reward per hunt action though. So if you win the hunt, maybe you would rather take the artifact that monster offers instead of um, the priest. But you do have the choice. Or if it's unsuccessful and combat ends, you can still choose to take um, whatever award you happen to unlock with your wounds. So I, I do one or more wounds. I can play as many cards if I want. If I had enough cards to outright kill the monster, then good for me. That monster's dead. If the monster survives... Then the player to my left would draw two monster attack cards from this deck here. And they're going to choose one to play. Say he plays this one. It's got a four in the middle. Now, if I don't block this, it says that it's going to deal one injury. That means I'm flipping one of my tokens over to the injured side. Not the end of the fight. Some of them might say the hunt ends immediately or, or the effects could be worse than that. So now I have the option of trying to block that attack. So I've got to play four worth of value of cards from my hand. So say I played these, a two and two ones, that's four. I block the attack. The hunt goes to a next round now. I can draw two cards. If I chose not to block or couldn't block, but I'm still in the fight, then I would just draw one card and repeat those same steps. So the hunt's either going to end successfully by you killing it or unsuccessfully by... Hit, uh, the monster ending the hunt with a, with a move, doing your fourth injury, or just not being able to do a wound at the start of the hunt. Anytime it unsuccessfully, if possible, you take a wound. If you've already got three, the fourth one will just end the hunt. Your hero is never eliminated from the game. Alright, so what do I think about the game? Well, I completely love this game. This is in my wheelhouse to begin with. Now, I like just about any type of game, but I particularly like dudes on a map area control games. The market is getting flooded with them now. This just came out at the same time as Rising Sun, which is the same genre. They're um, not that similar of games, so they're hard to compare. Because they came out at the same time, everybody is always saying, so what's better, Lords of Hellas or Rising Sun? They're pretty hard to compare, and I like them both immensely for different reasons. I think this one would be more compared to Kemet. With, with the broader wind conditions in this one, it, it, it's just thinkier. There's more to, more to take in, more decisions to make. This one etches out Kemet for me. I love the technology in, in Kemet, but the artifacts and the blessings in this game give me that same feel. And in fact, it's way less intimidating because in Kemet, you've got... 
a thousand options right at the start of the game, and new players are just like, oh my god, like, w there's, there's like 60 different texts uh, to, to pick from right there. I don't know what I want. And this one, you get your choices in small doses, and it's way more palatable. So, I think this is, for me, like, as far as dudes on the map, and Kemet is one of my favorite games, and this one, I think, replaces Kemet for me. I'm not gonna sell it off just yet, uh, and there is an expansion coming from Kemet, but I just like this game so much. It's very high praise to say that this one is probably sending Kemet out the door. My wife loves this, and she's like, meh, with Kemet. Like, she'll play it because of how much I love it. She's even won a couple of games and was just surprised that she pulled out a win. But um, it doesn't take any convincing at all to get my wife to play this, so it gets points there as well. Game plays in 45 to maybe 90 tops, two players, and then 90 minutes to two hours, uh, three, four player games. Let me just talk about the two player game for a minute. Um, there's a few different end conditions that change. The uh, building a monument thing, the King of Kings, doesn't count for a two player game. Once a monument's built, that's it just stays built. And instead of having to control two full lands, you have to have three full lands for the win there. You can still win by having five temples, um, killing three monsters. And um, when you do the build monument special action, you get to freely do an action that you have already done, one of your special actions. So it moves the game on at a little bit of a faster pace. I think it's a great rule. And I expected to not mind two-player game because because uh, I just like the way this game plays. But the two-player was amazing. I was blown away by how much I liked the two-player game, which is another reason why it dethrones Kemet for me. Kemet's not uh, a game I ever think about pulling out with two players. This game is very strategic. It's got just as much burn-braining decisions and dis and decision-making and strategy to, to make, and it's still like a super tense, tight game at two players. Three, four-player games, yes, it's amazing, especially at four. Three-player games, um, you've always got to watch out for because as soon as two people start fighting, that third player is going to be trying to sneak by and take advantage of not being a target. So the three players really have to be aware of each other and know when to stop fighting each other and concentrate on another player. But when you first start the game, you choose where you want to start If you with your two hoplites. If it's already got a population of two, then you get to take control of that. But that's even part of the strategy. You look at where all the monsters are, where the quests are, where the other players might have already started and you're picking your setup. So if you have to set up in a more strategic place, well, that is a good decision you made that's going to help with that. So I've been gushing over the game. I love it. I love the building of the monuments throughout the game. When you send your priest there, you're going to get better and better rewards based on how high it's built. Some people have complained that because they start off as just empty slabs, you don't get to see... You don't get to see them built very often. You get to see one built per game, if that. So you can either play a variant where you start with them fully built, and instead of building a monument, you just take a piece off, call it destroy monument instead, and then you get a little more of that aesthetic throughout the game. And in one of the expansions, um, I can't remember which one it's called, but there is there is one of the expansions where the monument or monuments will start out full. And the game is way more strategic than luck based because um you know a game with risk where you're rolling dice to see who wins um the best laid plans can be foiled by dice this one is very very high on strategy and low on luck you could get lucky based on artifacts you might have or blessings you might have but that is luck you're making for yourself because you're making those choices to get that artifact or you're building the temple so that you get first pick of the draft so I still put this like 90% strategy and 10% luck maybe. Uh, like the monsters, you could have all these monsters roam into your territory uh, from the dice and just wreak havoc. Just, you know, they just keep rolling hits on all your hoplites 
and they're wiping out two here, three there, one there, hurting your hero, and the other players get through unscathed. There could be a little bit of a luck swing there, just all oh, the monsters are really punishing to me and they're not really messing up other people. But still, uh, you can you can try and do the build monument action so that you can move them out of there maybe. Especially if people have been moving them towards your home, uh, you know, your cluster of civilization the whole game. So most of the luck is mitigated with good decisions. So Lords of Hellas, two big thumbs up. This game is a four out of four, a game I would play all of the time, never turn a game down. Always exciting. Thanks for watching my review, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.